Welcome. I'm Claire Schaefer. I graduated with honors from a trade technical school in California, where I learned how the most expensive designs and the cheapest were made. What are the difference between haute couture, ready to wear, and home sewing? This is a fascinating subject, and I am glad that you have joined me today. I have been writing and teaching couture, ready to wear, and home sewing techniques for more than 40 years. I am the author of the only books on couture sewing and ready to wear, and if you buy them, new, I will receive a royalty. My research has included couture workrooms, large and small ready to wear companies, designer interviews, dozens of museums, and I have a collection of more than 2,000 garments. Let's begin with haute couture. Haute couture is regulated by the Fédération Française de la Couture. The term haute couture is a legal term similar to a trademark. To use the term, members of the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture must follow specific rules. The number of employees and the number of original designs is not always the same. For example, in the 1970s, 75 original designs were required. In the early 2000s, 35 were required. Today, 25 are required. Haute couture is made by hand, and it is not available in stores. This Chanel blouse is in the Victoria and Albert collection in London. It is one of the few couture garments I have seen that is completely made by hand. Most garments will be machine stitched on the vertical seam lines. The Chambre Syndicale's definition excludes couture houses outside of France. I use the made by hand definition to define couture. This allows me to include Valentino in Rome, Scassi, in New York, and Hardy Amy's in London. Sadly, only Valentino is still in business. There are many differences between couture, ready to wear, and home sewing, but these are the most important. Couture and home sewn garments are not available in stores. Couture is made specifically for a client and proportioned for that client. It is made by hand with few, if any, fusibles, little machine stitching, no machine buttonholes, and fabrics may be more expensive or exclusive. Most couture techniques can be used by home sewers. Ready to wear is called off the peg in England and pret-a-porter in France. It can be purchased in a store. It can be very cheap, or very expensive. This stunning ready-to-wear jacket is by Yves Saint Laurent. It has a fused front and machine buttonholes. It was made almost completely by machine. Home sewers can use any techniques they want. It can be all contour construction, like the jacket on the left, or all ready-to-wear construction, like the jacket on the right, or it can be a mix. Both jackets were made by Vogue 7467. Notice that the jacket on the right does not have a breast pocket. This ready-to-wear blouse is a private label. The label has the store name, but not the manufacturer. In America, the term couture is frequently used to describe expensive ready-to-wear. Givenchy has an haute couture label and a couture label, which is ready-to-wear. The Chanel labels for haute couture and pret-a-porter are easy to distinguish. Most designs in haute couture, ready-to-wear, and home sewing begin with the fabric. In haute couture, Fabrics are the highest quality. Some fabrics are unique, 
like this hand-painted velvet, while others, like this wool, are the finest quality. In ready-to-wear and home sewing, fabrics can be very expensive or very cheap. In couture, the pattern begins with draping muslin on a dress form which duplicates the customer's figure. The dress on the left is Scazi. The dress on the right is Christian Lacroix. The original Lacroix design had a short skirt, but the client wanted a long skirt. Some couture houses have a dress form for each client. A few have padded bodysuits that can be zipped onto a standard size dress form for each client. In luxury ready-to-wear, the pattern begins by developing the design on a standard dress form. This is a photo of Lorcan Mulcaney and a dressmaker at Belleville Sassoon in London. Notice the patterns on the wall. Patterns for inexpensive ready-to-wear are usually drafted using the flat pattern method. A few ready-to-wear designers, like Jean Meyer, drape designs on half or quarter scale models. In home sewing, the design usually begins with a commercial pattern. This is the first pattern I designed for Vogue patterns many years ago. The couture construction is based on an Yves Saint Laurent design. The custom couture collection featured basic designs with couture construction techniques. Vogue made the pattern and I made the sample or a toile. A toile is a muslin sample. The muslin pattern is frequently used for the layout in some couture ateliers. The seam allowance will be at least one inch wide on the garment sections. They do not have to be even since the seam lines, not the cut edges, will be matched. In some workrooms, the seam allowances on the muslin are cut away because it's easier to mark the fabric. In ready-to-wear, the layout varies. This is a small manufacturer in Los Angeles. All pattern pieces are laid out in a single layer, no folds. Then they are traced onto the marker for a single garment, which will be cut out with shears. A larger manufacturer might have a stack several inches high and use an electric knife. Here you can see a marker. The section has been placed on the marker after the underlining and interlining were added to check the size of the garment sections. The marker has one half inch seam allowances and the cut edges match when the garment is assembled. The one half inch seam allowance is one of the distinguishing elements in ready to wear for enclosed seams such as the neckline, collar, and pocket edges, the seam allowances are one quarter inch. Enclosed seams are cut with five eighth inch seam allowances in home sewing and couture. They are trimmed after they are stitched. It, this marker is unusual because the seam lines are marked on the marker. Many markers do not have the seam lines marked. A large manufacturer will have an electric cutter like this Gerber machine. Most home sewers will use a commercial pattern which comes with a sewing guide. Notice the front piece four, which has a slight curve at the edge, but the facing piece 12 has a straight edge, so the facing had to be shaped to fit the front. This is a traditional couture technique used on men's jackets at all price points. It is rarely used on women's ready-to-wear jackets because it is more costly to construct. The sewing guide includes layouts for all sizes, the fabric, the lining, and interfacing, and for several fabric widths. Some home sewers prefer to create their own layouts. 
This is a coat I made several years ago. The fabric has a pattern and alternate satin stripes. This is a sample layout I made for the coat so the edges at center front match. In a couture atelier, most of the work is done by hand at a table with the pressing equipment nearby. This is a flue atelier or a dressmaking workroom. The fabrics are light to medium weight and often silk or velvet. The atelier had only two industrial sewing machines as well as a regular home sewing machine. And the irons had both steam and no steam. Some dressmakers never use a steam iron because it is hard to control the moisture. In this atelier, each dressmaker had an iron which did not steam. As you can see, no two workrooms are alike. In couture, the seam lines are first marked with chalk, pins, or a tracing wheel. Then they are thread traced. She is using a needlepoint tracing wheel to trace the seam lines. Notice how she uses the fingers on her left hand to prevent the fabric from shifting. The fabric is pinned right sides together with the pins on the seam lines. She is thread tracing the seam lines using a separator to avoid sewing into the bottom layer. The separator can be a piece of cardboard, small scissors, or a seam gauge. This section has been thread trace. The seam lines, grain lines, and notches are clearly marked. In Italia Atelier, or bespoke tailoring workroom, the seam lines are first marked with tailor's tacks. The roll line is thread traced. Bespoke is a term used in men's tailoring. It means that the garment that is being constructed has been spoken for. In other words, he's paid a deposit. This manufacturer makes very expensive designs. You can see the special marker for the darts. In less expensive ready-to-wear, the darts are marked with clips at the seam line and a very fine needle, one half inch below the dart point, and frequently the darts are simply eliminated in the design. In ready-to-wear and home sewing, the match points or notches are marked with one eighth inch clips. In couture, they are marked with thread tracing. In ready to wear, some garments are made completely by machine. The price increases with the amount of hand sewing. This is the basic industrial straight stitch machine used in couture and ready to wear. I learned to sew on an older industrial machine. It did not have a backstitch lever, so I learned to make back tacks using the knee lift to raise the presser foot and my hands to move the fabric back and forth. Many workrooms and factories are adding the industrial zigzag machine. A large factory will have a variety of single purpose machines to make buttonholes, sew buttons, overlock or serge, blind stitch, even set patch pockets. This is a special machine for machine stitched rolled hems. This machine stitches the top and bottom of belt loops on jeans. This operator is stitching a one half inch seam allowance on an industrial straight stitch machine. The one half inch seam width is easier and faster to stitch than the home sewer's 5 eighths inch, but the garment cannot be altered as easily. One of the things I learned early was that if I used a half inch seam allowance when setting sleeves, they were much easier than when they had a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. This is a quarter inch enclosed seam. 
and home sewing and couture. Enclosed seams have a wider seam allowance and are trimmed after they are stitched. This couture workroom had only one machine, a machine which makes a variety of zigzag stitches. The dressmaker is stitching on the basted line and the needle is in the extreme right position. The seams are extra wide and the edges do not match. When she finishes the stitching, she will take the garment back to her table or to the pressing area. In couture, the hem is interfaced, basted, and finished by hand so that it doesn't show on the outside of the garment. In ready to wear, the hem is often finished with a blind hemmer. In less expensive ready to wear, it might be just machine stitched. In home sewing, it can be any, anything you want. You can see the interfacing under the hem on the right. Good pressing can improve the look of poor sewing and bad pressing can ruin a beautifully made design. This is a couture workroom, but many home sewers and high-end manufacturers use similar techniques. This is a different couture atelier. She is using a large firm pad to support the garment. The seams are extra wide and she is pressing the darts open with a dry iron. In couture, a great deal of shaping is done with the iron instead of with darts and seams. On a hanger, this jacket looks boxy. You don't see the princess seam because the front and side front sections were cut with the straight grain on the seam line before they were stitched. The side front section was shaped with heat and moisture until it looked like a typical side front section. Now you understand why made by hand means shaping as well as stitching. Most manufacturers have a pressurized steve iron. Some home sewers have a gravity feed iron, which provides a similar amount of steam. According to one children's wear designer, you're always working behind the bars of a dollar sign and your product line has to stay within specific price points. In ready to wear, most seams and hems are finished with serging or an overlock machine. In couture, most seams and hems are finished with hand overcasting because it is the flattest and least conspicuous. Wide seam allowances are clipped instead of trimmed because they lie flat better. The corners are rounded so they will not curl up. They are really rather pretty, don't you think? Here are a few of my favorite couture techniques that you won't see on ready to wear. There are few, if any, darts, and when there are, they are often hidden like the darts on this Chanel jacket. Look at the detail and you can see that the white color is narrow in some sections. Setting sleeves is one of the most difficult skills to master. In ready to wear, sleeves are frequently cut with less ease and a shorter sleeve cap like this jacket. An experienced operator can sew them without pins or basting. On this jacket, you can see how the shorter sleeve cap affects the drape of the sleeve. It is less noticeable on short sleeves. Some operators use crimping, some use basting and or pinned. In home sewing, most use one or two rows of machine basting to control the ease at the top of the cap and pins or basting to hold the sleeve in place. In couture, the sleeve cap is carefully shaped before the sleeve is set in. She is using a 20 pound tailor's iron, which is called a goose. It does not steam, so she is using a dabber to dampen the fabric. After the sleeve is shaped, it is stuffed with tissue 
until the jacket is ready for the sleeves to be sewn in. Shoulder pads are made in couture. I watched this worker make these shoulder pads over her knees before putting them on the dress form to be pressed. In ready to wear and home sewing, they are usually purchased. Couture evening gowns include the required underpinnings to create the desired effect. In home sewing and ready to wear, they are purchased extra. The lace on this sleeve is lapped on the seam line. Some of the lace will be trimmed away on the top and bottom layers. Then the layers will be sewn together to make an invisible seam. The garment on the right is an expensive ready-to-wear design. The seam is bound with flesh-colored chiffon, so it is less noticeable than a narrow plane or a French seam. Handmade thread buttonholes and fabric or bound buttonholes are used instead of machine buttonholes in couture. Sometimes the pattern on a bound buttonhole matches the garment so precisely that it's difficult to see the buttonhole on the garment. These jackets are similar. The couture jacket on the left has a straight collar, which was shaped in a curve to fit the neck. The ready-to-wear jacket on the right has a collar that was cut with the curved shape. Which collar do you like better? If you are interested in more information about the Federation de la Haute Couture et de la Mode, here is the link so it will be easy to find them. The success of any business is dependent on returning customers. In couture, it is particularly important. The premier in this workroom told the customer she could return later to have the car wash scenes sewn together if she wanted. Another customer received an extra pair of pockets, which had no trim if she tired of the pockets with trim. As you can see, there are many differences between couture and ready-to-wear construction. If you are a home sewer or small business, you can choose what works best for you. I'm Claire Schaefer. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, join my channel for more fashion and sewing videos.